I'm Jim Thompson. I founded Jim Thompson and Company. We're a nationwide disaster restoration company. We clean up after large industrial disasters, uh, commercial disasters all over the United States and Puerto Rico, Alaska, et cetera. When the hurricanes hit Florida, we were about as busy as anybody can be down there. We have a tremendous amount of equipment. Had a lot of, uh, a lot of semi trucks in the area. We brought nine semis into uh, Florida immediately. By doing this, we were able to help our clients get back up and running at a, at a very quick pace, as you'll see here. One thing I've learned in the 20-some years I've been doing this with insurance adjusters is that they don't like surprises. We keep in good communication. We have good work. Give them a fair price. We let them maintain control of the job site. We do the technical stuff in cooperation with the plant manager, with the risk manager, with the adjuster. We handle it as a team. By doing that, we get them through it and no surprises at the end. I own my own equipment. I've got massive amounts of generators. I can actually uh, power up a pretty good sized town with them. I own our own dehumidifiers, our own fuel cells, fuel trucks, et cetera. That really got us through when other companies were scrambling to find rental companies that were already out of equipment. We were able to uh, maintain and keep our clients in business. They maintain market share. By doing this, kept the business interruption down and kept the adjuster in control of the loss. You'll see some of the stuff that was going on actually during the hurricanes. I hope you enjoy it. Within hours of our original call, we were pumping major amounts of water out of this facility in Orlando, Florida. There's 11 million cubic feet of wet air in this facility. They have $4 million approximately full of product, and the cardboard boxes absorbed a lot of that moisture coming in. The roof has failed four times, to my knowledge, since we've been here. Out here, what we've got going is a lot of dry, dry, warm air being pumped into the facility. We're drying the facility using these desiccant dehumidifiers and the refrigerants inside while the roofers are up there working basically around the clock throughout the weekend to get this new roof on to save our client's product. This is a 278,000 square foot distribution facility with a 40 foot ceiling. We've got cold decks in here and we've got uh, freezers in here, etc. What happens here is that uh, individual manufacturers bring in their products into this facility and this client goes out and uh, with their trucks makes local deliveries to convenience stores and restaurants and, uh, and things like that. It's very important to the local economy that this place keeps on going. Where I'm standing right now, a few days ago, this whole seams opened up here and just it was pouring rain in here, just pouring sheets of rain. That's what the, uh, the tarps are doing up over here to save as much product as possible. What we do is keep these guys in business by saving their product, by dehumidifying the air, drying the moisture out, and if the roof does fail and when it does fail, as they're putting the new roof on and tearing the temporary off, we'll be here with flood extraction equipment, flood pumpers, teams of people with squeegees and uh, pumps, et cetera, and get as many thousands of gallons out, out the door as humanly possible, as fast as possible. The main thing about it is, while we're pumping, they're still delivering product to their client. That's why we're here. That's what we're doing. With the system we have in place right now, we're taking approximately 7,000 gallons a day of water out of the air. There are very few pieces of equipment this size in the United States. Outside air is being sucked in here at 15,000 cubic foot of air a minute. It is being thoroughly dry for this big honeycomb desk and wheel going around. That's what these tubes are coming in. The tubes up there are doing. Taking the dry air from our machine, mixing it with the wet air in here, drying the air. Then we use the air being dry in here as a medium of exchange, which dries out the boxes of content. Otherwise, what happens is a forklift hits these pallets of uh, wrapped cardboard boxes that have like Coca-Cola in it, things like that. The pallets do not hold, the uh, cardboard boxes lose their integrity, the shrink wrap doesn't hold it, and we have Coca-Cola bombs all throughout the warehouse. This water right here, a few hours ago, 
was in our customer's product. This is set up mainly in case the roof fails again today and we have tens of thousands of gallons of water dumped in here on top of us. This will bring that humidity from that 100%, 95% humidity way on down, back down into the low, low 40s, high 30s where it is right now. We determine the amount of equipment needed on a job site by what is the amount of moisture in the air, in the environment, and in the contents. Day four, day five, day six, etc. we can tell that we're actually lowering the humidity to where we want it to be. Under 60%, mold is inhibited, corrosion is inhibited. By owning our own equipment, we're able to have our system set up and in place very rapidly. As soon as we show up, we just plug the red into the red and the green into the green and the blue to the blue, etc. and we're ready to go in a matter of hours versus having to wait days for somebody else to show up and show us how to do it. This isn't Hollywood. This is a real live disaster right after Hurricane Charlie hit. The roof still's not holding. If it rains this afternoon, we're going to be flooded again. But the main thing about it is, is our client is up to date. They're in full operation. Their routes are caught up. That's what we do. We protect market share. We protect the ability of these guys to do their job by doing my job. We pull up here with our own semis, our own stuff, we go. So I consider part of our job is to help the local economy rebound after these catastrophes by using the best state-of-the-art equipment that's made. This is the beginning of Hurricane Francis in Orlando. We're at ground zero. Here we go again.